their relations over the same, uh, over first order relations of the same arity. That's, that's a very, that's not necessary. Of course, you could go to higher orders, but there's no need to, I'll suggest. In fact, for the, um, for the first order relations, we really just need arity 0, 1, 2, and 3 to get an awful lot of natural language interpretation. And for the second order relations, we just need unary and binary relations over unary first order relations. So there isn't actually a large explosion here. Um, what is useful, though, is to uh, supplement the combinatorial operations that we had before with a couple of additional ones. So one is simply um, the preimage of an individual in the domain in the uh, codomain of a relation, um, uh, application of the relation, as it were, uh, to um, or uh, of its inverse, to give us the set of um, first arguments that uh, are related to a given second argument, uh, and the second is a more complex operation, but an interesting one, uh, which takes a unary second-order relation over unary first-order relations, a quantifier in point of fact, a set of sets of, of uh, members of the domain. That's what it takes as its first argument, as its second argument takes an unary first-order relation. And what it does when it combines them is to produce an n minus one unary first-order relation as follows. It simply says that relation holds of these of a given n minus one individuals just in case the quantifier is true of the set of nth individuals which are relate which uh, are related to those n minus one. So um, that's uh, that's again another uh, just just an operation on these uh, this this limited set of operations. So if you take the full power sets of the arities that I described, uh, they are Boolean algebra. They're closed under the operations that we're interested in. Of course, you might not want the full power sets. You could take subsets, which were again Boolean operations. Uh, sorry, Boolean algebras, and were closed under these relations. So let's call these doubly extended relational algebras. Um, they provide all we need, really, not just for uh, interpreting determiners of the uh, syllogistic sort, all, some, no, but also non-syllogistic <coughs> determiners, like most, as binary relations between sets. So all is essentially the inclusion relation. Uh, the first argument is included in the second. Uh, some is the non-disjointness. No, the disjointness relation between these sets. Most is a slightly more complicated relation uh, having to, uh, that compares the cardinality of uh, the intersection with the relative difference of the sets. Um, nouns, like freshmen, juniors, are interpreted, as you might expect, as simply sets of entities. Uh, what about verbs of various kinds? Well, intransitive verbs, uh, like stood, would be interpreted as unary relations. Transitive verbs, like, say, date, as binary relations. And ditransitive verbs, like, let's say, gave, as uh, ternary relations. So we have adequate denotations for the various lexical items. How about the semantic rules? Well, here's where those new uh, combinatorial rules that I, I described enter the picture. Um, so an, um, a noun phrase, a, uh, a generalized quantifier, if you like, a, a, a second order concept, as Frege called it, a set of subsets of the domain, simply takes the binary relation uh, between subsets that the determiner meant inverts it because we usually think of its first argument as being the one that the noun um, uh, fills, and then uses the noun's denotation as, as its second argument, fixes that, giving us the set of sets that are related to the noun denotation. And then all of these operations, like the one that combines the subject with a predicate 
verb phrase or the, uh, the one that combines a transitive verb with its object noun phrase to yield a verb phrase, similarly for ditransitive verbs with a first and second object, all of those use that other operation I described, which takes a, um, a, a full quantifier, a noun phrase interpretation, and an n-ary relation and produces an n minus one ary relation in this uniform way that I described. Always simply quantifies the way the last argument plays of that relation. So um, when you combine two noun phrases with a ditransitive verb, you get a unary relation. One noun phrase with a transitive verb, you get a, a, a unary relation. And uh, no noun phrases at all with an intransitive verb. And you have a unary relation. When you then combine that verb phrase, that unary relation, with a noun phrase as the subject, is the sentence you get, sentences interpretation, you get a zero area relation. It either holds, is true, or doesn't hold. It's <laughs> not true, of no arguments at all. So that's the basic idea, and what you get then for these sort of familiar syntactic trees that, uh, for which there's good syntactic, semantic interpretation trees whose pieces are put together algebraically in uh, the fashion that these rules describe. So it, I think you can see there's a sim fairly simple uniform structure to composing those interpretations. Summing up, since John Perry is kicking me in the shins, uh, uh, if you extend these relational algebras slightly further, you can actually have an algebraic semantics of natural languages, which is a good thing. Uh, it preserves Frege's insight that quantifiers like everything, but also including not just the syllogistic noun phrases, if you will, like all freshmen, but others such as most juniors, these are all second-order concepts, uh, unary second-order relations on unary relations on the domain. And you can also at the same time, formally capture Aristotle's implicit insight that these, all these determiners, all, some, no, and, and even most, are relations between sets. They're binary second order relations between uh, unary uh, relations on the domain. Because you don't, so you can capture that and get the right truth conditions for sentences where you couldn't uh, interpret most in the other schema, in the other way, because you cannot define the, the requisite cardinal, relation of cardinalities within the relational algebra, the first order relational algebra. We're no longer trying to define the meaning of most this way. We're simply using the algebra to compose the meanings of things. So um, I'd like to suggest that, uh, in fact, um, you can combine Pat's vision with Montague's vision of how the semantic interpretation could go. These postulated semantic values are efficient to compute. They respect the linguistically motivated syntactic structure. They neither escalate semantic types nor necessitate artificially inserting variables, as you saw. And they also interpret these uh, sentences with these non syllogistic uh, determinants. So, to, uh, to quote some of Pat's words, in algebraic semantics, with the properties that he desired, uh, as, as that, this snugly fits the syntax of natural languages as subtly as could be desired. So thank you very much.